Climate change has exacerbated extreme weather conditions, making traditionally dry regions increasingly drier and locations that often receive a lot of rain more vulnerable to flooding. Every year, this costs us hundreds of lives and millions of dollars in damages. But what if we could transform this negative feature of climate change into a good by simply pumping water from flood-prone areas to drought-prone areas before the flood arrives? So, good news! That is exactly what we are discussing today. The video is about how to fix flooding and drought at the same time. Desalination decreases the need for fresh water near the coast. Drought has spread outside Southern California as a result of climate change. It has exacerbated storms, resulting in massive floods that waste millions of gallons of fresh water. However, we are unable to consume it. To store floodwaters, we have dams and reservoirs. When these systems are full and a severe storm strikes, dam doors must be opened to let the water escape, flooding lowlands downstream and dumping fresh water into the ocean. Wouldn't it be better to pump water from the four reservoirs to drought-prone areas before the storm, rather than spending hundreds of millions on desalination facilities? Reservoirs will have adequate capacity to prevent flooding and use fresh water when storms hit. When answering this question, there are several aspects to consider. What happened to the water? Every town, agriculture, and ecosystem on the planet requires water. Despite the fact that pure water covers 71% of the Earth's surface, drinking water is scarce. Humans have access to only 5% of the world's water. If you wrapped fresh water, rivers, and lakes into a sphere, it would be 35 miles across. At 70 miles per hour, you could drive by all of the world's drinkable surface water in half an hour. Then everything makes sense. Fresh drinking water is unevenly distributed around the world and difficult to find in some areas. We've been moving water for ages. If you're enjoying the video so far, please make sure to like and subscribe to our video. If you don't, then you'll drown away in a flood soon, so you'd better subscribe. California, the world's most hydrologically changed landmass, is running out of water. California is home to nearly 40% of the population of the United States. About 23.8% of these 40 million people live in the state's driest region, Southern California, which has the highest water demand. Aqueducts bring water south from the Colorado River and Northern California. What is the source of California's water scarcity? First and foremost, the Northern Sierra Nevada mountains receive the majority of the state's annual snowfall. Winter snowfall is decreasing due to climate change. Less snowpack equals less water in the summer when temperatures increase and snow melts. Lake Mead is emptying up, jeopardizing the water supply of Southern California. The lake, which supplies the state with 4.4 million acre-feet of water, is at its lowest level since 1937. Because we use more water than the river can replenish, levels are dropping. Farming consumes 60% of California's water while household and industrial consumption consumes the other 40%. The state generates 13.5% of total agricultural output in the United States, including one-third of all vegetables and two-thirds of all fruits and nuts. California grows 80% of the world's almonds on 5.68 million acres of farmland in the fertile Central Valley region, which is somewhat larger than New Jersey and a little smaller than New Hampshire. A fertile yet arid land, as the population of the United States expands, so does the need for food and water from California's farms. Severe droughts, such as the one we are currently experiencing, have disastrous consequences. According to UC Merced, the prolonged drought will cost the agriculture economy $1.1 billion and 14,634 jobs by 2021. When we consider the indirect material and human losses caused by wildfires and other natural disasters, we can see how bad things may get and will get. How do we put an end to droughts? Las Vegas can point us in the right direction. Through prudent laws, water conservation, recycling and reuse, the city has cut its water use by 26%. While we can limit urban consumption, we cannot reduce California's food production because there is too much at stake. Other than finding more water, there must be another alternative. The following is an important aspect of the video. Floods waste millions of gallons of potable water that could be utilized to alleviate droughts elsewhere. 
Most flood control systems, like those in California, contain canals, Libyans, dikes, dams, and reservoirs or holding tanks to store or channel excess water during heavy rains. What happens next? Instead of erecting costly dams to boost flood control, we should employ flood risk management. So it is. Assume you are anticipating a major storm and your flood control reservoirs and auxiliary holding tanks are nearly full. Pump water out of reservoirs in advance of increased rainfall, but do not discharge it downstream. Instead, pump it to a neighboring state or somewhere where water is scarce, killing two birds with one stone when a storm hits. The empty reservoirs can accommodate the surplus water without raising the floodgates, preventing a flood and wasting precious water. This might be a new type of water management that works similarly to energy microgrids by managing water supply and demand to make the most of a valuable resource that falls naturally as rain. To make this work, we must overcome two major obstacles. The first step is determining when and where heavy rain will fall so that we can pump it out. We'll also need to know if the reservoir has enough capacity to hold all of the water that we pump out. This isn't a simple task. NVIDIA is the world's largest GPU manufacturer and an AI computing powerhouse. NVIDIA's Karthik Kashinath revealed that the company is working on a machine learning and artificial intelligence program to study the Earth's climate. NVIDIA created Predictions, a high-resolution, data-driven weather forecasting system that is 50,000 times faster than traditional numerical weather forecasts. Second, it has the same accuracy as numerical weather forecasting approaches, allowing us to predict hurricanes, atmospheric rivers, storms, tornadoes, and other extreme weather events significantly more accurately and 50,000 times faster. The essence of the problem is being able to forecast events that will occur in a specific location at a certain moment, rather than just a few days, weeks, or seasons in advance. NVIDIA's goal is to combine the best AI technology with the best data sources. So if you're trying to limit the amount of water released from a dam and pump it to another state, you need to know ahead of time how much rainfall is anticipated in which section of the state, what the conditions will be to pump it to another state, and what the situation is in that state. Is there water prepared? A digital twin is required after storage facilities. So, by utilizing Earth2 and the Omniverse platform, NVIDIA is able to address the uncertainty associated with weather by providing extremely fast predictions with great resolution, good accuracy, and extending further into the future than ever before. We can actually ensure system success by linking these forecasts with digital twins of our hypothetical hydro microgrids to improve water distribution and flood risk management, provided we have the required infrastructure in place to transfer water around as needed. This leads us to the second main impediment, the expense of infrastructure building and operation. This is the single most difficult obstacle, and there is no quick fix. In reality, Australians attempted something similar to this at the beginning of the 20th century, but the effort failed due to financial constraints. The Bradfield Project aimed to absorb floodwaters from Australia's coastal regions and pump them inland, reportedly transforming the barren terrain into a sort of green oasis with warmer, cooler temperatures via a rainforest effect. After multiple independent analyses decided that the prices were prohibitive and the design would not work, the project was rejected. But what if we already have the majority of the infrastructure in place, but didn't realize it? We do. As we transition away from fossil fuels, we may use oil and gas pipelines to transport water. This makes a project feasible and affordable. When most people hear about utilizing oil pipelines to pump water, they immediately think of water contamination. Carcinogenic aromatic compounds in oil are harmful to both human health and the environment. To use them as aqueducts, we must thoroughly clean them. Is this possible? Can oil pipelines be sufficiently cleaned to pump pure water? Is this just wishful thinking? Dare to dream big? Yes, right away. A 30-mile section of an oil pipe was recovered and shipped to Vietnam to be used as water transportation pipeline near Ho Chi Minh City where it would likely serve for another 40 years, according to Pipeline Equities, a company that engages in pipeline mergers and acquisitions, as well as pipeline salvaging. We all know that 30 miles of pipe is simple. What about laying down 2,000 miles of oil-free pipe? Engineers have already thought about it. 
We may modify pipeline inspection equipment, or PHD pigs, to clean oil from pipes. There are also natural gas pipelines that have never been in contact with crude oil. As a result, gleaning would be minimal. We have options other than rebuilding infrastructure from the ground up. There are 3 million miles of oil and gas pipelines in the United States. They connect America's major cities. We eliminate the need to rescue and remove retired pipelines and build new aqueducts by recycling existing pipes, minimizing additional damage to ecosystems, landscapes, and other resources. So, this was all on how we can fix flooding and drought at the same time. Hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you don't, you're drowning in the floods. We'll see you in the next video.